Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, everyone, and welcome back to another thrilling Thursday of Hawaii Food and Farmers series. I am Pomai Weigert, and I'm going to be your host today. I'm very excited because my guest today is Mahalani. Hi. Hello. Hi. And uh, she, she comes with just a plethora of talents and experience <laughs> in the food and farming industry. Um, Mahalani, could you please tell us who you are and where you, who you work with, what you do? All right. Um, I'm Mahalani Matsuzaki. I work for the Kamehameha Schools um, in their um, community-based um, uh, community engagement and resources division. Mm -hmm. um, my particular line of work there is um, with community partnerships on Kamehameha Schools lands. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the program? Um, Aina Engagement, mm -hmm. um, specifically Aina Ulu. And is it statewide? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Kauai to Hawaii Island and everything in between. That's awesome. That's uh, we have these little notes on here so we can talk about <laughs> what we can talk about and what we cannot. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, this is the outline to remember. Yeah, this, is, this is so yeah. that uh, if we forget, if we're getting on path, uh, getting off track. And what would you? How long have you been doing this? For twelve years now. Oh, yeah. So was your experience in? community Aina engagement, or did you sort of just fall into that 12 years ago? Um, well, my background actually is in education. Oh. Um, trained English teacher, oh. student publications, I know. Oh, I know. okay, let's put pieces together, pieces <laughs> I, together. I, I like, I like <laughs> critique your writing kind of thing. Um, but I also worked for a, um, a uh, small private ed tech company mm. um, here in Hawaii, and um, also Alulike. Okay, um, yeah. Um, with um, career technical ed, um, mm. we did a lot of develop, developing and um, managing um, programs, okay. education programs, which is how I got into um, the same thing, developing and managing um, programs at Kamehameha. Oh. How long, how long has this program been in operation? Have you been with them since the beginning, or is it like very old, I mean long? Started before me. Okay. Um, in about 2000, I think about 2000, it came out of our first strategic plan uh, from 2000 to 2015. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it preceded me. Huh. Um, it, was, it was originated with a whole bunch of community um, participants mm -hmm. um, and their primary interest was how do we um, engage community and learners um, in these beautiful places, mm -hmm. um, accessing learning places as learning places. Sites as places of, of learning. learning. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could end. You might, I mean, in the last 12 years, you must have seen a lot of change and shift. I mean, it's our society, our economy, our communities, our food. Do you feel like um, it has been successful? Do you feel like, like ever? I mean, obviously things can't happen like overnight or in a decade, all everything. You know, we can't have all our dreams, but do you feel like um, it's going in the right direction? I think it's really interesting progress. Mm. Um, you know, from, I mean, fast food is so pervasive. The whole <laughs> That's conversation a good word. That's a good word. <laughs> thank you. It's not, it's not judgmental. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, cheap and quick food, um, it's, it's what fuels a lot of, uh, not fuel, maybe not fuel, maybe that's not the wrong word, but yeah. um, it's there. It is. But I mean, both, both the fast food as well as all of those other um, elements of convenience, like plastics, yeah. um, you know, recyclables, certain kinds of, I mean, there's big, huge shifts. That's where I see those shifts happening. Uh -huh. Who doesn't carry a water bottle around anymore? Mm -hmm. You know, everybody owns multiple water bottles, practically. Maybe that's the new um, industry. But 
I mean, and it's and you it's mean like, like a hydro flask? Yeah. Or yeah, like a not a plastic water bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those the, are the very out. Oh yeah, gosh, I mean, you right? just people look down on you now if you're like if you don't. Of, yeah, you yeah. need a, you better have a reusable everything, and I, I'm I'm grateful. But it, it is, uh, it's very consumer driven and we're taking yeah. like a very big social shift. Do you, um, with the, cause is it organizations that your program partners with or like who are you guys trying to target? Well, we, you know, we have partnered with um, community organizations mm -hmm. that um, steward, mm -hmm. um, restore mm -hmm. land, um, and places. Um, they usually come Aina to that place. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're part of those communities. Um, their families are in those communities. Um, educating children is part of what they do mm -hmm. naturally. Um, so those are usually who we look to when we, when we partner, when we mm -hmm. think about a special, really special place, who would you entrust that with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and most of these lands are Kamehameha's agriculture and conservation lands, which constitute the bulk of um, Kamehameha Schools' lands. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like 85% of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I didn't realize it was such a big chunk. Yeah. Uh, well, then the, well, and obviously the, uh, the stewardship is vital, and, and we were just talking about it's essential. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it has that has to be there. And, and we were just talking about too how like um, these practices and protocols and types of education are really making like a revival or a not just locally but globally like yes. people who are traveling indigenous the world. Knowledge. Yes, indigenous knowledge. Yes, what was old is new again. Mm -hmm. So the ways that indigenous people lived on the land, you know. They call it leave no footprint kind of thing. I don't know. Is that a scouting, Boy Scout kind of thing? I don't know what they call it. But, you know, where you, you leave as little uh, a or footprint. Or Yeah. Yeah, totally. Live lightly. Live lightly. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, uh, it's, a, it's a challenge every day, especially um, on an island like this one that has a lot of the population. Uh, we have a lot of external. What is it? Tourism is like six million a year, seven it's million big. a year. It's big. It's a big yeah. chunk. It's uh, and and again, looking at ways to integrate um, knowledge and economy and and uh, and all of those types of things. Do you get to travel a fair bit with your work? Um, Inner Island. Mm -hmm. I used to do that quite a bit mm -hmm. when I covered all of the projects statewide. Oh, okay. Yes. So is it just you or do you have a team? So there are two others that do what I do mm -hmm. and we um, have a team of six oh, people. Okay, yeah. statewide. We have, yes, yeah, statewide. Mm -hmm. This is statewide. Mm -hmm. In fact, my supervisor lives on the Big Island. Oh. Um, we have a guy, another guy on the Big Island. We have somebody on Maui mm -hmm. and then we have three of us on Oahu. Mm -hmm. The bulk of Kamehameha's lands are on Hawaii Island, the huge amount of them, yeah. and then um, Oahu, a little bit on Kauai, and a little bit on Maui and Molokai. And are you from here? From Oahu, mm -hmm. yes. My grandmother's family actually is from Maui, Lahaina okay. side, but I grew up in Kaneohe and then here in town. And then did you go to school uh, here, or did you go away to school? Nope. You, oh. Yep. Oh. Went to UH. Oh. My undergraduate and my graduate programs. Okay, okay. Uh, when we're looking at, uh, you know, there's so many people who are looking at the future of agriculture, and agriculture is a really hot topic right now, yeah, because it's food systems, mm -hmm. and again, it's making a big social shift. Um, are there things that you see in your work um, that I, could be consumer driven or community driven? Um, that are are impacting the way that you folks run your organization? Um, I don't want to make that connection there yet, uh. but I do think that we um, pay attention and see and look at mm -hmm. what a lot of the um, forerunners of the industry are doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we're necessarily like a, I guess, a... a testing and research type yeah. of yeah, organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we, um, so a lot of the actual ag um, 
happens with our land managers and our resource managers. Mm -hmm. um, Which is different from what you do. Yes. Yes, yes, yes We yes. engage community partnerships mm -hmm. on KS land, and there, theirs are more on the tenant side, um, the farmers the, mm -hmm. um, that are on our lands. Um, but you asked about what do we do in our work. We actually partner with um, folks who steward lands, but, and some of them are doing things like restoring um, food systems. systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so of course, again, back to indigenous knowledge, things like um, ahupua'a systems mm -hmm. where water, um, lo'i field systems, um, fish ponds, um, a lot of these are old technologies mm -hmm. that we, f I think that most think that there, there are answers in those old technologies on how to grow food now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was great. That was, you did, that was a good job on that one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, whenever I have a, a guest, I always like to tell, I always like to ask them sort of like what are their favorite foods um, in Hawaii because the show is about food and farms. So there's always like a, a food from a farm and then just maybe, you know, a food from Hawaii. What are some of the, what are some of your favorites? Okay, I'm going to, Go on, on you know, <laughs> shout out to two people. Oh, sh <laughs> here it is. Okay, it is. one is um, Rob Barreca, his oh. counterculture. Barreca. I know. Barreca. Go Farm alumni. Yeah. <laughs> um, and his kimchi, his spicy Asian pear kimchi. Oh, you like that one. That you was like, good. That was well, really good. I like that one too. I, yeah, and yeah, yeah. he's very creative. Their whole crew is very out of the box. Yeah, yeah. So I could see yeah. how, okay, so. That's, I, I really a little, do enjoy that as a, like a regular thing, I guess. And the other one is Kasha Ho and her uh, yes. fermented um, tea, fermented green tea. She also, that was know, awesome. I don't know if this is a secret. I don't think it is because she, she had this at uh, Bye Bye, but she does, Kefir sodas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're so good. They're like, oh, when you come visit us, can you bring kefir sodas? <laughs> but she, um, again, re I feel like it's it's kind of taking like these old knowledges or you know, um, like preserving food. That's like a cultural practice. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and both the kimchi and the tea. I mean, they're they're like inherently good for you, you know? And, um, but then when you add the brand of Kasha and Rob, like it turns into economy, which I, is really yes. thrilling, which yes, I, yes, I feel yes. like it's such, a, it's such an exciting time for people um, who are going into new business um, if you're creative. Cause yeah. I feel like right now, if you're not creative, you're behind the curve. Yep. You're behind the curve. Okay, so, um, what about foods you grew up with that are, are are sort of more local? Maybe do you have any guilty pleasures okay. that Hawaii has? Yes, yeah. dry aku. Oh, so I don't know if that's guilty though. I don't know if that's. I feel like that's. If you eat the whole thing, yeah, <laughs> it is, I think it is kind of a little guilty. Uh, okay, I mean, when like, you were a little kid, and your your grandma had you know brought some aku from the fish store, mm -hmm. dry aku in that little pink wrapped up butcher mm -hmm. paper. You know, you, you got a little piece. You know, you got, it was cut up and then you got a little bit. And you chewed it for a long time because it better last because yeah. you ain't going to get any more. Yeah, I love it. Get every piece of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah. So a friend of mine brought home from the Somebody Creative um, is drying and processing in Hilo. And it was sold in um, the Kona Costco. Oh. Um, and a, one of those like, refillable Ziploc bags, right? And a friend who was in Kona, brought that home and forgot it in my refrigerator, yay. And um, that was my snack and that was my little guilty pleasure, just pounding the bag of aku. Well, aku. more on guilty pleasures right after this break. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. 
Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Is it going to be? Hi! And we're back. That was a quick break. Uh, and we ended our last little set on guilty pleasure, food guilty pleasures. And that is going to jump us right into um, we when we were on the break we were talking about what we wanted to talk about next. <laughs> what do we what do we want to talk story about next? And we really wanted to talk about the variety showcase that was took place a couple a few months ago, like February or March, like February or March, and it was a collaboration with the Culinary Breeding Network, Go Farm Hawaii. Lots of cool people. There were a lot of cool people at that event. It was held at Kapi'olani Community College. And um, I, I was so excited that we were a part of that one because it had, it had chefs and it had farmers, but it was very different because it, it showcased different varieties. So the food and beverage, I want to say food scene, chef scene, it's very hype, you know, yeah. like... Uh, if you're a foodie, you've been to a lot of different shows. You're, every chef has a farmer. It's very marketable right now. But that show was very different because it was very brainy. You know, there were, and there were things that I feel like even if you're a normal foodie and you attend a lot of different things, that there were things that I had never seen before. Yeah. Yeah. So thoughts on Variety Showcase. That was a good one. Thank mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. um, so... I, I think it's probably my favorite foodie event I have ever attended. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about, you know, foodie events. You, we are people, not paying her, guys. We no, are. no, not at all, not at all. Um, and, you know, usually you, people get dressed up to these foodie events, and they wear their high heels and whatever. Our farmers were kind of dressed up. That was kind of dressed up they for were the wear, farm yeah. community. Yeah, well, for it was great. It, Aloha was shirt. Yeah. Aloha shirt. Yeah, clean There's, shirt. It was yeah. even like, just how about clean shirt? Can we do clean they shirt? They changed the hat. Yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> They did. Mm -hmm. It was great. I mean, um, but just the, um, like you said, it's the, the nerd version. Mm -hmm. Because of all of the seed varieties, there was like a, you know, the whole genetics. Yeah. The whole genetics thing. And it was or, uh, Organic Breeding Network, I feel like, was also there. So I feel like people who think they know a lot of things, I think, really had their minds open to... There is a lot of genetics that is also in organic breeding, and um, it was great to see to see the the curators and the breeders and the farmers really shine um, with these partnerships. Obviously, with chefs, we had a lot of great chefs, and chefs always bring all the people to the yard. That's true. You know, so we ha we have to always. Because that's that's the delivery method. You okay. Know? Besides the booze. Oh. What was your favorite? <laughs> What's your favorite dish? You just Two. automatically thought the cocktails <laughs> were gonna be my favorite. Uh, no, I, I, I didn't. I didn't drink it, so I didn't know. Oh. But oh, other okay. than that. Other than that. Your two favorite dishes. Oh gosh. Um, I like the one from Roy's. He did like a. Oh gosh. Moringa, uh, moringa. Oh, the kalamunga. Yes, yes, fried it's rice. Fried rice. Yes, the little medallion yes, of yes, kalamunga yes, fried yes. rice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the lechon kawali mm -hmm. on top. And that he was, was great. He was. Uh, I like that he. That it was, was brilliant. It was pretty brilliant. It was pretty brilliant. You know, like uh, I haven't seen that on a lot of. You know, I've been to a few, and I haven't seen that that method or that style. And he was so fun. Like he yeah, was. Yeah, a, yeah. It was really engaging. Personable, yeah. Right. It didn't like get to. You know. He, he was ready. He was ready to go with that. Um, how about you? Mm, that one definitely. I went back several times for those teeny tiny little things. I liked the uh, <laughs> banana Hawaiian banana source, banana Gabe. Oh, gosh. oh yeah, yeah. They banana did Gabe. banana Gabe. <laughs> he did like a banana mousse, so it was like banana, but like oh. like you know hardcore North Shore style. 
So it was like, you know, felt like it had more authenticity. Nothing against banana. I mean, probably he sells bananas to them, but that was great. There was polenta. Oh, yes, there was polenta. Who did polenta? Uh, Kenny? Rob? Oh, and no. Oh, Barreca. Yes, him Rob Barreca. And, and, and Jay. He and yes. Jay Boss. Mm -hmm. I think they had um, polenta. That's right, because they do, the, they do variety corn. And then Small Kind Farm was the mushroom on top of it. Uh -huh. That was Ed. Kenny. Yep, and Kenny. Right, because he wanted to, he did a comparison. Yeah, yeah. He did California uh, version cornmeal and then and then Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, mm -hmm. And then, as I mean, I know you didn't drink, but um, Beer Lab was there. They did a great job. I love them. I, lo I mean, shout out to Beer Lab. Did you see all the honeys? <laughs> And they had them in these, had them um, in the wine glasses. I thought their presentation was great. And their, uni their university, so I feel like that's another thing too, is like... Um, Showcasing the research element yes. with the food, and with the And bridging those industries. I feel like bridging those mm -hmm. industries because it's very like, you know, you sit at your table or I'm gonna go under my tree. Uh -huh. Where like this was, um, you really got to see research, farm, foodie, um, afterwards, we were talking about how, like, 10 years ago, you know, things like organic farming and, like, agritourism, they were so radical. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, those people were the radicals. We're like, now, um, you know, that's where a lot of farmers are looking at how can they diversify, especially when they make all, you know, um, really, you know, cool products mm -hmm. and, um, and, like, a way to grow business. Uh, was there a... A farmer that you liked at the variety showcase? Um, yes, because well, I mean all of them, but I'm yes, <laughs> definitely yes. But I I did like um, so all the cabbages. Did oh, you see yes. the, the the mounds of cabbages? That was pretty. That was pretty eye catching. But um, also, Doctor, I gonna say his name is Ahmed something. The the one that Chickpeas. does yes. <laughs> That was amazing. Secret note I, that nobody knows. I went and picked up those garbanzos. I picked up those chickpeas. Yeah, there was this whole thing because from the bushes? Uh, no, 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 not like, not like pick them. <laughs> okay. ah, that's so okay. funny. That's, uh, that's a, no, pick them up from okay. the office. Okay. Yeah, I picked them up from his office. Okay. Uh, because his building is next to ours. Um, okay. At Manoa, so I. I literally went in there and I was like, I'm here for chickpeas, and they knew exactly who I was, so then I was able to bring them down. What did you think about those? Those were different. I, I, I was well, I not love, expecting that. I like falafel, so oh. <laughs> grow all the, if, if the, see these varieties, they're talking about testing the different varieties, right, mm -hmm. for, that would grow well in Hawaii, right? So I mean, I, I think that's fascinating, mm -hmm. that these um, varieties of plants that grow in other parts of the world, not native to this world, because we want improved soil health. So grow more mm -hmm. legumes and beans, right, mm -hmm. in Hawaii. So that's pretty awesome. I like that. Mm -hmm. But um, right next to him also, too, was Glenn Tevis and his most beautiful so mustard cabbage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. And he's like, he's like a genius. And he's like a yeah. revered. And he's like, you know, a, a cute old Hawaiian man, you know, from <laughs> Lakai. Like, he, I, yeah, he, um, and he just has so much knowledge. Yeah, uh, Th those beautiful mustard cabbage. I've never seen such a beautiful mustard cabbage. Pretty good job. Um, we're coming to the close of our conversation, but last question is, um, you're obviously in it for the long run, being in, in food and, and stewardship and culture. Um, what is your hope for the future? What do you, you know, if people are watching this and you want them to like, be involved or, or know something about being a part of this community in Hawaii, what would that be? Wow, you don't See, ask. Just, boom, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. You sorry. ask hard <laughs> questions. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it can be simple, okay. it can be simple. Okay. I know you know. Well, I think for individuals is start, start at home, start small, something that you can make a part of your regular life, whether it's composting, or it's buying, you know, make an effort to buy local produce. Um, you know, the way that they lay out supermarkets, mm -hmm. um, 
I think it's the you only shop the perimeter because that's where the the meats and the the, the oh. meats and the vegetables and the fruits and the all those things are. Um, start there, you know. Start with your own regular habits and develop those, um, and then think about you know what's in your community, what things that you can get involved with and support, um, whether it's with your um, you know a school in your um, community, your children's school, a hobby. I mean, we got a lot of um, people hiking all over, re lots of recreation. Mm -hmm. But you know, these landscapes that we live on, their primary thing, if we take care of it, you know, we do better taking care of it. Mm -hmm. um, we will have more food security and just more security. Period. And I think mm -hmm. if we are able to feed ourselves, not it's not just a you know, it's a, to, to say the S word, sovereignty issue. All, all of us, if we're <gasps> able to feed ourselves, how mm -hmm. much more secure um, can we be? We're not dependent on anything else. No one's ever said the S word. Uh, <laughs> it really comes down to that, right? Uh, Managing, really yeah. you know, all of those things full circle, our, 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 our ability to, to rely and depend on ourselves and our communities around us. Great. Thank you, Mahalani, for awesome. spending this time with me on a Thursday afternoon. I hope the people were listening and they heard what they can do uh, for themselves and for their community, because I feel like just really turning that light bulb on um, is key. So that's the end of today's show, guys. See you next time.